Also, just a background on how this event came to be. When the Idol No More movement began, Idol, sorry, Solidarity Halifax was really happy to lend support and attend events, and through that, we're uh, kind of engaged in dialogue with the local Idol No More organizers and came to understand the need for public education. So, the aim of this event is public education to kind of give everyone an overview of the context for the struggle and what the movement is about locally and nationally. Uh, also, most importantly, I guess, or other most importantly, often at this type of event there is a question and answer period. We met to discuss this, and we have decided that the evening is quite packed with a lot of important information from people directly involved in the issues. So while we certainly don't expect that you might agree with everything that is being said, or that your questions are necessarily answered, um, we feel that in a group this size, and with the amount of time that we have, that the amount of that the questions wouldn't necessarily uh, kind of serve the whole. So uh, we really encourage folks to stick around, uh, chat with people afterwards. Also, I'm going to give you a little update on events after we have our speakers. And so we encourage you to do that, to check out the internet. Um, but there's lots of information outside of what's going on. And uh, also, if our speakers are willing to hang out to approach that. So just to be really clear, there will be no question and answer period. So, without further ado, I'd really like to introduce our first speakers, Rashon Kay and Rebecca Moore. They are youth from the Idle No More Movement. So I'd like to welcome you both back. so many people here tonight. It's really amazing. Uh, my name is Rochelle McKay, and I'm a student here at Dalhousie University. And I am Anishinaabe from Little Saskatchewan First Nation. And I'm honored to be speaking here on behalf of Idle No More. And when I was handing out flyers for this event this week, trying to convince all of you to come here tonight. I was really amazed by how many people had not heard of Idol No More and didn't know what it was about and didn't know of the conservative legislation that Idol No More opposes. So I think that's really where we have to start tonight. Idol No More is a grassroots movement that began with four young Aboriginal women in Saskatchewan who felt the need to inform the general public of omnibus budget bill C-45. <coughs> An omnibus just means that it covers a multitude of amendments to a number of acts and legislations currently set in place. Bill C-45 was pushed through legislative parliament without the process of consulting First Nations people and the general Canadian public. This broke an amendment to the Canadian constitution where the government was ordered to consult with his First Nations people when matters of land, rights, and water were at stake. <laughs> the future of our lands and waters in Canada were put solely into the hands of Indian Affairs Minister John Duncan, who supposedly had consulted with First Nations before the tabling of this monstrous bill. Bill C-45, I believe, is a direct attack on First Nations land and the bodies of water that we share across this country. And it's not just an Aboriginal issue. It is an issue that all Canadian citizens should be really concerned about for not just yourselves, but the future generations to come. The government is not concerned about protecting and preserving the lakes and rivers across Canada. <coughs> Bill C-45 allows mining for pipelines and hydrofracking to become a free-for-all on those opened up waterways. When did we say it was okay for Canada's natural resources to be offered up to the highest bidder? The treaties protected those waterways for hundreds of years, but under the new legislation, foreign investors are gonna be able to come in and destroy Canada's lakes, rivers, and natural environments. I have two younger sisters who have been raised traditional Anishinaabe. They hunt, they fish, they grow vegetables for sustenance. They don't go to grocery stores. 
They are powwow dancers and they are grandmothers in the Sundance ceremony that my father dances in. My greatest fear is that they will no longer be able to live off the land as they do now and that their children will not have the same natural resources that they have been able to live off of and to find spirituality within. What is a Canada without beautiful waters, without vast green forests and clear blue skies? It is not a Canada that I want those two little girls to grow up in, and it is not a Canada that I want for the future of all Canadian children. to join in a revolution which honors and fulfills indigenous sovereignty, which protects the lands and waters for future Canadians. First Nations people are the fastest growing population in this country and the only Canadians with a constitutional right to these lands and these waters. And that's why First Nations people are the most likely group of people to save the Canadian environment. But we can't. But we cannot do this alone. We need solidarity from Canadians who are concerned about what is happening in the legislature, concerned about the bills that are being passed, and what that is going to do to our future generations. We must first of all recognize and acknowledge that it is the land that binds us and connects us all. The land is the foundation for all life, and we owe all of our existence to the earth. The land is what sustains us. Just as important are the other elements that sustain us. Water is the passage for all life and must be taken care of. The air reminds us of our sacred responsibility in taking care of plant life. In our ceremonies, the sacred fire is an entrance for the spirit. This awakening that we are seeing around the world is the people's demand for change. This change begins with changing the way we have treated the earth and changing how we have been living, not following the natural laws that truly reflect, reflect sharing and respect for all life. Our government has chosen prophets over their First Nations people, over the land, and over our water. And, in, and as an Anishinaabe and a Canadian, I will be idle no more. <laughs>